consider the following region R and vector field F. Compute the two-dimensional curl of the vector field, then evaluate both integrals in Green's theorem to check for consistency, and last but not least, state whether the vector field is conservative. So, the very first thing that we want to do here is compute the two-dimensional curl of this vector field. And so we can recall that for a vector field F with components F and G, the curl of a two-dimensional vector field is defined as the partial derivative of G with respect to X minus the partial derivative of F with respect to Y. So this is where we will begin. So in this example, we are given the vector field F. And we have the components little f and little g, where little f is defined as minus x and little g is defined as minus y. So we can see here that the partial derivative of g with respect to x is 0, and that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is 0, letting us know that the curl of this vector field is 0. Beautiful. Now, Part B is asking us to evaluate both integrals in Green's theorem. So we can remind ourselves that we have the line integral form of Green's theorem, and we now have the double integral form of Green's theorem. So to begin, in both cases, we need to have an idea of what our region R looks like. So we know that R in the xy plane is a set of all ordered pairs xy such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4. So this implies that we have the set of all ordered pairs within and on a circle of radius 2. Voila! So if we were going to use the line integral of Green's theorem in circulation form, we would need to come up with a parametric description for the curve that bounds this region R, aka the circle. So since we are working with a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2, we know that we can parametrize this curve using the vector valued function R of t with components x of t, y of t, such that y of t is defined as the equation 2 for our radius multiplied by cosine of t, and y is the equation 2 times sine of t. And this is a complete circle, so this is going to be such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So this is where we're going to start. We're going to use this parametric description of our curve to evaluate the line integral. So the next thing that we need to do is parametrize the vector field. And so replacing the components x and y with x of t, y of t. And so this leaves us with the vector with components minus x of t, minus y of t. And plugging in the components of our parametric representation of this curve, we have the vector with components minus 2 of cosine of t, and then minus 2 sine of t. And notice here, we've got a scalar multiple of 2, so I'm going to pull that out in front. So we have 2 times the vector with components minus cosine of t minus sine of t. Beautiful! So the next thing that we need to do is use our parametric representation for the curve C to find the tangent vector. And so we are left with the tangent vector, vector r prime of t, and the vector with components minus 2 sine of t, positive 2 cosine of t. And again, notice we have a scalar multiple of 2, so I pull that out to the front, and we have 2 times the vector with components minus sine of t, cosine of t. Beautiful! So now we are officially ready to go ahead and set up and evaluate the line integral. Plugging in everything that we just found, we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the parametrized vector field dotted with the tangent vector. And so taking the product of our two scalar multiples, we have 4 times the integral with components 0 to 2 pi, and then computing the dot product of these two vectors, we have negative cos of t times a negative sine of t, producing positive cosine of t times sine of t, plus 
minus sine of t times cosine of t, which leaves us with a minus cos of t sine of t. And look at that integrand. Those terms are canceling each other right out. So we are left with 4 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 0 dt. And of course, we know that the 0 integral leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 0. Lovely. So next, we now need to go ahead and confirm this answer by evaluating Green's theorem using the double integral. So to begin here, let's again consider that region R that it's bounded by this curve. So looking at this bounded region R in the plane, we have a circular region. So it's a pretty good assumption anytime we have a circular region that we're going to use polar coordinates. So again, looking at this circle, we can see it's centered at the origin. So the smallest the radius could be is 0, and the largest that this radius could be is 2 units long. So we can say that our radius r is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2, and now we need the bounds on theta. So we know that theta is the angle from the positive x-axis, so this is where our theta is 0, and then rotating in a counterclockwise direction around this circle, we end up back at the same ray, which we know represents where theta is 2 pi. And so there we have it. We can say that theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, since we already computed the curl in part A, we are officially ready to set up and evaluate the double integral. So plugging in everything we have found, we have the outer integral, which is with respect to theta from 0 to 2 pi, our inner integral, which is with respect to the radius from 0 to 2. We found the curl of the vector field to be 0, and this is our polar differential, r dr d theta. So again, we see we have the zero integral, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of zero. And so therefore, we have confirmed consistency between both forms of Green's theorem. We have shown that the line integral over the curve C of the vector field dotted with the differential d vector r is in fact equivalent to the double integral over this bounded region r of the curl of our vector field dA. They're both equal to zero. And so we have officially finished part B. And last but not least, part C of this question is asking us to determine if this vector field is conservative. So we can recall that a two-dimensional vector field is conservative if the partial derivative of g with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Now, we already have all the pieces to answer this question. Recall that from part A, we know that the partial derivative of g with respect to x is equal to 0, which is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So since these partial derivatives are equivalent, we can say that, yes, the vector field f is, in fact, conservative. Woohoo! And so there you have it. This is the answer to part C and completes the solution to this question.